Now let's take a look at the actual MCDU. This will be your multi-purpose and control display unit. We have down here buttons for operating, we have keys on the left and right side, and we have enunciators on the MCDU. Starting with the power on and brightness control button. When the aircraft is electrically powered, the MCDU normally powers up by itself, it does a self-test, and then lands on the MCDU menu page. We do have the option of turning off or on the MCDU individually by using the key, which is marked right here. The MCDU has its own enunciators. The enunciators are located in the top and on the left and right side, respectively. Looking to the indications you can have, an FM 1 or 2 in the upper portion of the MCDU shows in amber when an FM has failed. That means a flight management system has failed. Not the MCDU, but the flight management. It will show for FM 1 or FM 2, respectively. You can also have an indication in the top, known as independent, and that shows independent operation of the two MCDUs and flight management and guidance systems. When the flight management and guidance systems no longer operate in dual mode, it will go into independent mode and operate individually to their own peripherals, captain's side for FM1 and the first officer side to the right side from FM2. This is known as independent mode and will be shown on both the MCDU displays with the IND enunciator. The green ready light simply means that the MCDU has powered up and is ready to be used. On the left side of each MCDU, you can also have an amber fail. Not to be mistaken with the FM1 and 2 failure up here, which was a failure of the flight management system. This comes on on the respective MCDU if the MCDU itself has failed. The FM in white on the left side here illustrates to the pilots that there is an important message from the flight management system, but that the selected management system is not the primary for supplying the information. And finally, on the right side, you can have a white indication saying MCDU menu, this will come on when third-party applicants such as the ATSU or CFDS systems give information to the MCDU, but you need to manually go in and check it via the MCDU menu page key here. So that was the enunciator panel. When looking at the screen itself, the screen is operated by left and right line select keys. We call them LSK line select keys. The screen itself is divided into portions. The very top is the title field, usually indicating to the pilot what page you're on. Then you have for the left and for the right side respectively, two lines of information for each key. It provides a total of 12 lines for six data entries. Each line right here is operated by its respective line select key. You can see here that label number one is operated by line select key number one and the information that goes with it is the left data one. How we insert data and delete data, select data, comes up in the slide ahead. White information, a label, is permanent information green, blue, or amber information is selected information and will be given here. This is modifiable information. Hence, these labels right here, these data entries in green, they're the modifiable. These are the entries that you can change. On the right side, you have the same. You have the right data one to six with label one to six on the right. And this is operated by the right line select keys. If I wanted to change information on the right data four line here, I will use line select key number four on the right side. It is easy because the keys right here have a line into the actual left or right data entry point. And how do we enter information? 
We do that using the alphanumeric keypad right here. Notice here that the keypad is not identical to that of a modern mobile phone or even a laptop or computer. It uses the alphabet in an alphabetic order from A to Z and the numbers 1 through 9 with 0 at the bottom. When information needs to be inserted or changed on the MCDU page up here, we will use what's known as the scratch field. The scratch pad allows us to enter information and then choose which data entry point we want it on. So if I wanted to change the data, let's say up here on left data one, I will type it in with the alphanumeric keypad to the scratch pad, and then I will select the key up here to push the information I have typed here up to that line select key. And the reason I mentioned before that we're following the Smith and Tally's setup is because one of the fundamental differences between Honeywell and Smith and Tally's is how the scratch pad here works. We do not have the option like you do on a Honeywell software setup to take information by clicking here and putting it down on the scratch pad. The only information that appears on the scratch pad is the information you put in and information that comes through the system as messages to you. There aren't that many differences between Honeywell and Smith and Tally's when it comes to the FM FMS. Think of it as the MCDU is the hardware and the software that runs behind it can be compared to that of Windows or Mac OS. There are slight changes, but you can do pretty much the same functions on the two systems. If your type rating or your operator uses the Honeywell, this presentation is still very relevant to you because it's based off the Airbus setup and not Smith & Tally's particularly. Now that we have looked at what the screen provides in terms of information and how to put it there, let's look at some of the special keys that we use also to put information in. The slash key allows us to put information into multiple fields all at once. A good example would be to put in the zero fuel CG and zero fuel weight at the same time. We'll put one value and then divide it by a slash and the system then knows that you're putting in the information in two different data entry points. The SP here is for space, it's a space bar. And the clear button here will be one of the most commonly used buttons on this keypad. It is used to clear the scratch pad or clear waypoints and data, etc. The page keys here allows you to navigate the different pages on the MCDU from a direct to performance, progress, fly plan, etc. As we go through the setup, you will be using these in a specific sequence but the pilot can always operate them whenever he or she needs to see a specific page. Certain pages require you to scroll through information as there is more information that can be shown on a simple single display here, such as the init pages, the performance pages, or simply the flight plan. To do so, we operate the slab keys here, or the key arrows to left or right or up and down. There will be an indication up in the corner here to show you if it's up or down or left or right or if there are more pages to be shown. I'll point this out when we do the setup in a little bit. The MCDU menu page here always brings you back to the main menu. Here we can enter into the flight management and guidance computer. This is what we will be using to set up the MCDU. But this is also where you will enter into third party applications and systems such as ACARS, CFDS, and so on. The ATSU function is a data link, as I mentioned, which allows the crew to receive or send limited data depending on the version that the system has installed. This is not covered in this presentation, but should be familiar to the pilot prior to operational use on the line. Finally, the airport key right here, this is a shortcut key to allow you to jump through for example, a long flight plan, it allows you to jump from the departure to the approach. And then if you have an alternate from the alternate and to the arrival for that alternate. It is a shortcut key. We will also be pointing that out during this setup. The overflight function is a unique key that allows you to 
insert and overfly at a waypoint, sequencing of that waypoint without actually overflying. You see, when our aircraft flies to a waypoint and changes direction, if the turn or the change of course from that waypoint is quite steep, the aircraft might calculate that it doesn't need to overfly it to turn as this will allow a longer route, but simply cut the corner a little bit inside to save performance. But you might be required to overfly that point prior to turning. And if this is a requirement, then you can use the overfly function here to tell the aircraft to do so. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.